Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar. Today's webinar will cover sharing operational insights using ArcGIS Online. We'll focus on examples from mosquito control uh, for Sentinel GIS or Field Seeker GIS software users. But many of these uh, many of these concepts or applications could apply to other operations as well. The broadcast today will be about 30 minutes. We'll keep it to 30 minutes or less. At the end, we'll have some time for questions. So throughout the, the, the discussion and presentation, please feel free to enter your questions in the questions section of the GoToWebinar panel. Um, at the end, we can have questions also uh, by unmuting your line. So what I'd like to talk about a little bit today is uh, the use of ArcGIS Online in conjunction with Sentinel or Field Seeker with a few different focuses, uh, helping operations supervisors uh, to, to use operational information and share that internally or make decisions based on it. Um, also sharing data information with the public and assisting public information officers as well as uh, managers to share information internally and present information to the board or uh, at special events. So we'll take some examples here, show a couple of slides, but then I want to show some examples of the actual maps and apps. When it comes to operations, uh, our software, Mosquito Control Software, Sentinel and Field Seeker, Field Seeker, excuse me, are operational data collection systems. Lots and lots of operational data is collected, but sometimes the difficult thing is to easily visualize or use that information. Um, everyone has their favorite reports that they run, etc. But sometimes uh, being able to see things on a map is, is extremely handy. So visualizing trap results, landing service requests, and other information that's used to make decisions about where to deploy resources is important. Also looking back at a past year or the current year versus uh, past years when it comes to um, trends and hot spots, things like heat maps and time enabled data can be very um, can be very handy. So I know some of you on the, on the line today are using some of these kinds of things uh, internally in your organization. and if you're if you're not using some of these things, there are uh, tools that are actually available with the ArcJS platform that you have. As far as for executive decision makers, uh, operation supervisors on up in the organization, uh, being able to have a quick view of what's going on in, their, in, in operations is important. So things like dashboards, as well as being able to present this information in various forms. So all of us have seen uh, uh, presentations at, at annual meetings or maybe have done you know, presentations internally we are trying to show information on a graph or on a, on a screenshot of a map uh, on a PowerPoint on the big screen, and it's difficult to show people what it is that you're talking about. Uh, some of the, the things in the ArcGIS platform that can help with this are things like story maps and even PowerPoint tools or presentation templates in web apps that let you have uh, you know what you're used to with, with a PowerPoint or, or uh, that kind of presentation, but with interactive uh, maps and multimedia connected to it. And then to communicating with the public. Uh, oftentimes uh, there may be a separate in public information officer that, that is charged with, the, with, this, with these duties. Sometimes uh, that duty falls to some of the operations people and, and managers. So there are various reasons for sharing certain information with the public. Um, obviously, not all of the, um, the um, operational data is appropriate to share with, with uh, everyone in the public, but simple things like where are district boundaries? Uh, am I in the district or not? Who do I contact for mosquito control? Where is spraying planned for tonight? Um, what's recently been accomplished in my area? or even something like a service request geoform. Communicating with the public is, of course, part of, part of what mosquito control districts and, and health departments and public works are charged with doing. Uh, but there's also a practical 
reason for sharing certain things with, with the public, and that is hopefully to reduce the uh, amount of phone calls that you might get. And if done carefully, uh, it can certainly do that. Sharing some of this information um, may allow people to answer some of their own questions without having to call in. So I'm going to skip over to some examples here, and I'll start with the kind of where are we spraying tonight uh, map. And we have an example here on City of Chesapeake's, uh, Virginia's uh, website. And the where are we spraying tonight map is actually an ArcGIS online map. And it's very simple. It just shows which zones are to be sprayed. When I look at a full screen version of this map, it also includes for me um, an address locator. So if I'm Joe Public and I want to know um, what's going to be sprayed in my area, I can literally just type in my address or click on the location button and then that will zoom me to that area on the map. And this is an interactive map, so it's not just a screenshot or a JPEG. You know, I can get zoomed in to wherever I want and see where the, the spring is planning is planned to occur. Um, also some simple tools to change you know, change base map. Um, so the, the person interacting with this map has a little bit of, of control over what they see. And they can click on the location to be sprayed and it'll show you know the district name and that's what's to be sprayed tonight. Now what this looks like to you inside of the organization would would be something like this. So here's here's a uh, a web map in ArcGIS Online, and this web map has all of the districts and whether they're to be sprayed or not. So in looking at your current trap information, service requests, uh, landing counts, or whatever else helps determine where you will spray. Then each of these um, each of these zones you can simply edit and change no we're not going to spray that one and it turns green yes we are going to spray this one and it turns red so you know very simple tool to change that uh, on a zone by zone basis and those changes then would be immediately reflected in the public web map this this internal map uh, for editing uh, basically has a you know a, a view only kind of version for the public, and that can be shared with the public. And once it's shared with the public, then it can be um, merely embedded in in the website, and that generates the HTML that's needed to embed that um, public web uh, that that web map in the public website like what we were seeing back here. Um, so that's all it's required. It's basically a one-time setup. Once it's set up, then changes can be made on the, uh, the status of the zones and the web map is automatically updated. So if, if you are filling that role of updating the website and you have to make a map, do a screenshot, update a file, you know, maybe that's not a difficult thing to do, but if you're doing that every single day, it's nice to not have to uh, to do that. So that's the where are we spring tonight map kind of idea. Let's look at a different kind of application. Actually, I'm going to bring this one over. Uh, this is an example of an ArcGIS online story map. Now, uh, most of most of the mosquito control districts or uh, health departments part of um, you know, part of what you're doing also is public education. And there may be a variety of events that you attend and presentations you make and hands-on activities and so on. But this uh, story map can be used as a, a public education tool too. So this is an example of a story map which talks about integrated mosquito management. And as you scroll through this presentation, uh, it's kind of like a PowerPoint only. It um, also includes maps and links to um, multimedia. So we have, for example, here in Idaho, there's a, a you know a news story from recent years on uh, West Nile virus occurrences. Uh, 
and and then uh, as we as we continue down, um, information from the CDC um, on dengue outbreak in Texas is an example with an interactive map that shows the number of cases per city, and just like other maps, this is something that people can interact with. Video from a news story talking about equine encephalitis. And each of these sort of slides has the ability to, you know, link to other things, link to websites, um, and also embed maps that communicate what it is that you're trying to communicate. And so in this particular example, um, as it talks about integrated mosquito management, first explaining the dangers to public health, and then getting into the kinds of things that mosquito control districts do to mitigate the problem. So here's integrated mosquito management, and it discusses what that is, and then it goes into the kinds of activities that you do. So uh, dealing with standing water, uh, dealing with irrigation, um, abatement on piles of tires and illegal dumping and containers, um, talking about what mosquito surveillance is and biological control with mosquito fish, um, etc. So this is a nice tool to communicate uh, with public what it is that you as Mosquito Control District do. This kind of a self-service uh, story map could be embedded um, and linked from your, your public website and serve as a means to educate people as to what you do. And this is just an example with example pictures and maps, but this could also have some information about what you do in your district. The story map also can be a useful tool for internal presentations. So some of the information on some of these slides may be appropriate for the public and some may not. Um, you may be able to show additional details of your operations in this format, perhaps as an adjunct to an annual report. So that story map uh, tool is just an ArcGIS online um, application template. And um, it's one of those tools that it seems not a lot of people are currently using. And uh, if you're used to doing PowerPoints, it's not a whole lot different than creating PowerPoints. But the result as far as what's communicated um, is often much easier for people to understand. OK, another example of a public uh, information kind of map is a very simple one, which is where am I? You know, am I in a mosquito control district or not? And in especially in the western US where uh, a lot of mosquito control is a special tax abatement district or a special tax district rather, uh, just because I'm in the county doesn't um, guarantee that I'm actually in the mosquito control district. So on this kind of a map I could simply put in my address, zooms to my address, and then I can click on the district, and there's Twin Falls County Pest Abatement District, and information on how to contact the district, and also a link to their website. So quite a simple app, but, you know, this answers a lot of the kind of questions that people have to uh, talk through on the phone. Uh, this uh, abatement district map that we have on our landing page, our electronic data solutions, uh, ArcGIS online landing page, does use the actual abatement district boundaries from um, from the state's website. Um, and usually, the states do have some uh, some representation of that abatement district boundary that can be used for this. So um, it would be nice to have a national map that showed all of the abatement districts, and that's something that we're thinking of for the future as well. 
but this is something you could put on your website, especially if you're in an area where there are multiple uh, districts that uh, are adjacent to one another, and you know, in a, especially in metropolitan areas, just knowing who to contact um, saves the public a lot of headache. Um, uh, probably each of us have also been in the, on the other side of that transaction as a member of the public, trying to find who to contact for some particular service. And sometimes after three or four or five phone calls to different places, people are quite frustrated. Uh, all of you have taken those calls from people who are quite frustrated. So if we can make it easier for people to find information like this, then perhaps it will cut down on the amount of uh, frustrated phone calls that we have to take. All right, let's look at a couple of other examples. And this is probably more operational type information. It could be used in conjunction with the sort of where are we spraying tonight map. A um, couple of examples would be things like landing rate summaries or um, a heat map. So I'll show each of these kind of separately. Um, this is just an example of looking at landing rates month by month. And so if landing rates are something that are being collected on a daily basis, then here is one way that this can be presented. And this is a, you know, a sum of the entire month for these sites, and so they're large numbers. Um, but being able to switch just you know month to month and have the statistics update, this could also be presented as a time slider. Um, some of you might have worked with the time-enabled data, and so just being able to advance from week to week or month to month and kind of see how it changes over time. And of course, this information can be critical in deciding where to deploy spray trucks or where to plan uh, aerial spray missions. This might only be one piece of information, but in conjunction with service requests and or uh, trap results, this, uh, this kind of information is critical to decision making. So if you're used to looking at you know, a, a dense tabular report with numbers on it, this can be a nice adjunct to that to basically visualize the numbers that you're looking at on such a report. One other example here would be um, a heat map. So here is an example of all the service requests for a particular year. And uh, this can simply be visualized as a, a heat map in ArcGIS Online by changing the style, selecting heat map, and then it shows, um, you know, it shows the density really of those uh, occurrences of service requests. Now this could also be used in conjunction with the heat map, so you, or excuse me, a time-enabled display, so you could see month by month or year by year. So these kinds of tools can be used with with FieldSeeker directly. Um, FieldSeeker is already storing the data in, you know, in uh, in, in ArcGIS um, SD databases and using services um, with Sentinel data. Um, we have worked on and are working on integrations with ArcGIS Online where your operational data that's stored in a local uh, geodatabase, file geodatabase, can be synchronized to your ArcGIS Online account so that you can use maps like this in ArcGIS Online. Critical thing to point out about those maps in ArcGIS Online, if, uh, if you aren't already aware of that, is that each of them can be shared with whoever it is that you want them to be shared with. And so, for example, that where are we spraying map, I did briefly show this earlier, but each of these items in ArcGIS Online has a share option. And it can either be shared with the public, which in, the case, in this case would, would have to uh, happen so that it can be on my public website or it can just be shared with members of my organization or even members of groups that are either you know, a subset of people in my organization or even people in other organizations. So you know, in our organization, we've got uh, um, groups that include people at other uh, companies that we could share this information with. And so we're controlling who has access to what information. People can only get access to it using a uh, username and password to log in. So those are a few examples of sharing operational insights 
uh, using ArcGIS Online. Um, I want to ask a poll here to the audience with regards to these tools and kind of see what people are using or what they're interested in using. Um, so one question, if you wouldn't ma mind answering this poll question, the kinds of features that you're most interested in. It could take just a minute to answer that poll. Okay, so it looks like uh, quite a high percentage here interested in, in status maps and then kind of the where are we spraying and then to some lesser extent um, maps for presentations and story maps for public education. And that's to be ex expected, the, the public education angle and or story map angle um, may be more important to, like I said, a public information officer than, than an operations manager. Um, but those status maps looks like are fairly universally of interest. Also that where are we spraying, um, either for truck spraying or aerial spraying, is something that most people are interested in. Okay, one other question is um, regarding a service request geoform and just to ask the question of whether or not your organization already has a service request geoform on your public website. And then I'll cir circle back around and briefly show something about that geoform and talk about a couple of plans that we have in progress. So quite a few are saying yes, they have a service request geoform. And um, in many cases, the service request forms that people have on their public website, um, you know, pretty basic form, people fill it out, it sends an email to somebody, and they verify that and then input it into whatever system that, that you're using, send it out for assignment to the field. The service request geo form is a little bit different than that in that it also ties that request to a location um, on the map. So again, if I put in my address, so if I'm call, you know, if I'm trying to request service, and I know that the neighbor's got a pool, a, a pool that hasn't been cleaned in a long time, then I can put that request on that location, and I still have to fill out the information for the request. But this request then can go directly into um, you know, to, into a map layer that either Field Seeker or Sentinel can use. Now, one of the integrations that we are working on and that will be ready for the next field season is an integration between this kind of a service request uh, geoform, which puts the data in ArcGIS Online, and Sentinel. So this is already working with Field Seeker, the web-based or server-based system. Uh, but Sentinel is a desktop system, so um, integrating these two, basically Sentinel can go and get the new requests from ArcGIS Online and then push them directly into the service request module. So that's something that we're currently working on. So it's not a whole lot different in concept from the request forms on, on people's websites, but rather than simply sending an email that you've got to retype everything in, um, you know, it can go directly into the system. Likely someone will still verify it, make sure that it's a legitimate request before assigning it out, but it saves you some steps of having to, you know, retype that information. Okay, so I'm going to check out uh, if there are any questions, uh, if anybody sent any questions in. On the questions panel, looks like there are not any questions there. Um, if you want to ask a question verbally, you can also just uh, raise your hand in the GoToWebinar screen and we can unmute you so you can ask it. Or if you have one that you want to type in, go ahead and do that. 
also look at the chat here and see if there's any questions there. So I guess just to, to sum up, uh, while people are thinking about questions they may want to ask, if you're already using some of these tools, that's awesome, and we'd like to, to hear from you and just see some examples. It's always um, interesting and exciting to see what people are doing with, with the technology. If you would like to do some of these things and aren't, or aren't sure where to get started, then that's something that we, Electronic Data Solutions, can help with. Um, we are an ArcGIS Online specialty ESRI partner, and um, we can help you get your ArcGIS Online account configured and working with your operational data systems. I um, always like to point out that if you're using Sentinel or FieldSeeker, if you're using ArcGIS desktop or server, you already have ArcGIS Online. And most uh, most of you probably know that by now and already have it at least turned on and and uh, available. Um, if not, we can we can um, help you do that as well. It basically, just involves uh, reaching out to the Esri account manager or Esri service customer service and uh, requesting your ArcGIS online entitlement to be uh, stood up. So please do reach out to myself or to Ryan with uh, requests for help or simply to share examples of what you've been working on. And uh, if you'd like to be featured in some future webinar, we'd be happy to feature something that you've worked on. It's always more interesting if it's a real world example. Okay, let me just go back and check questions again, see if anybody has asked any, doesn't look like it. So we appreciate your attendance today. At the, on this webinar and uh, please do check in with us if you have any needs or questions and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.